Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Welcome to The Advocate on Plus TV Africa. And as you know, there's never a dull moment on the program. Today, we we'll celebrate 100 episodes since we began, and we're indeed grateful to all our loyal viewers who have followed us through since the beginning. We began as a platform to trash our tropical issues for five different perspectives. Here's a throwback on our one to the 99th episode. Nigeria is a very well-endowed country, so we're not lacking in resource. And our human resource is our strongest resource. Uh, you know, we should learn to build legacies or live life for others. Before we run out of time, I have a question. What, what's your talent? What would you have been? And we have to go quickly before we run out of time. If oh you were gosh. not doing what, what did you I, want to I be? I did tap dance. Yeah. I have just been a lover boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Sure. Let up with this whole generation, you know, let's let, let that generation get away with everything. They're always right because they're older than we are. They know better, which they don't. You know, I mean, if they knew better, why would Nigeria still be in the state that it's in? It's been in their hands for however long. Religion is money in this country. Yeah. Okay. And even more so, not only is it money, it also works hand in hand or is twinned with politics. Mm -hmm. right. From the examples of how you deal with the problems of Lagos, and if you come down to Lagos, solve VI, solve Mushi, and then you can learn, and then not, you cannot solve Nigeria's problem in 2019. I am not against worshipping God, I'm not against singing to God, I'm not against any of that. But there needs to be some consideration. I mean, not everybody buys into that. Today, we are less honest, we spend all the day in church, we give all the money to the church. So even if you are a true man of God, as far as I'm concerned, you are complicit yes. in the downfall yes. of this country. If the National Assembly members were asked to swear by Amadioha and Shongo and the you. rest, a lot of them will not fall. <laughs> yes. I'm not sure. But quite. Don't face I, it. I, I, I have a reason for why they swear. may not do that. Right. But I will, because I will, they, I, I will yeah, be because debated. They know, they know yeah. the consequences. I will, I will, they will I will never be really To be honest, every sexual encounter you have means you've slept with everybody that, that person slept has slept with. with. Mm. And there are lots of viruses that don't even have any name that you know of that you will get for life and you will be transmitting this as you go along. The budget for sex in Nigeria annually, even in the world, is triple the national budget. Okay, what okay. I'm saying is yeah. we must fight to make our democracy real for us. I'll bust your bubble. There is no hope. There's no decision. No, no, no. I think the people that believe in these pastors then it's serious mental health mm. check. Because, you know, people might be thinking, oh, we're just, you know, uncivilized, crazy, mad people. I'm not part of you people, though. <laughs> no, I said people. <laughs> I'm waiting to say my own. No problem. That's why I'm talking now. You talk your mm -hmm. own. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Today is the 100 episodes, and I'll be going first. And I'm saying Democrats are actually destroying our democracy. How ironic. Aman Chuka, who is joining us virtually, is asking, what are your virtues? I can't wait to hear Chuka anyway. And then Jumoke, one of our seasoned journalists, is asking, are Nigerians the solution to Nigerian problems? Or should we keep waiting for the Messiah? And maybe J.J. Rollins from Ghana. Bolahan, the only educated man in our midst, always advocating for funding of our public universities, citing experiences from his OAU days. I pray you don't leave the university soon. And lastly, Treasure gives a travel advisory to our Nigerian visitors, just the same way the UK give advisory to their visitors also. 
what you need to know before coming to Nigeria. Nigeria with AD. We'll be back in a moment. Stay with us. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Democracy, as given to us by the world, is defined as a government of the people, for the people, and by the people. But here in Nigeria, as is a government of the politicians, for themselves and by the judiciary. And that's why in Nigeria, Democrats are destroying democracy, DDD. INEC conducted by election nationwide on the 5th of December 2020 to fill some of the Senate seats that recently became vacant as a result of death of the occupants. While one can excuse the average Nigerian for not participating in elections that is neither presidential nor gubernatorial for reasons yes or known, I expected my Sorosuke guys to have taken advantage of the election to make a big statement that it was no longer going to be business as usual as governance is concerned in Nigeria. But alas, the outcome was same of the same. Or maybe many still don't have voters' card. But please, hurry up to register and participate in the electoral process as we can't wait to continue from the sideline forever. What also played out in the Imo East senatorial election is another first of our electoral lexicon. INEC had announced APC as pulling the highest number of votes, but insisted that there was no candidate as the court had disqualified the candidate of the party. Well, I still don't have the right word to describe such a scenario. Now, we not only win election from prisons without campaigning, we now have two candidates campaigning from the same party, contesting for the same position and the same seat. And eventually, we have a party winning without candidate, Nigeria with AD. The Federal High Court sitting in Oweri, presided by Justice Gaba Ringim, in suit number FHC OW 101 2020, sacked the APC candidate Sir Frank Imbezim and ordered that his name be replaced with that of Senator Ifai Aradome. However, the Court of Appeals sitting in Oweri and presided over by Justice Uche Chuku Oyemenam on the fourth day of December 2020, sacked Senator Ifai Aradome and replaced his name with that of Imbezim. In another twist, the Federal High Court sitting in Abuja, presided over by Justice Iyang Ekwo, on the same 4th of December 2020, in suit number FHC slash ABJ slash CS slash 1229 slash 2020, between Asomogu Tony and Frankie Bezim and others, disqualified Sir Frankie Bezim for forgery and restrained INEC from recognizing him as candidate for the purpose of the election similar to what happened in David Lyon's case of the APC in Bayesa State. Politicians are forged with Shah. Please don't mention Salisu Buhari of Toronto or Tinubu, Chicago. Be me talk more. But they are both development. It became obvious that at the day of the election, that's the fifth day of December 2020, the APC had no validly nominated candidate for the election. So why INEC was quick to obey the court judgment in Zamfara and Bayesa, why wonders why they are insisting that a party without a candidate would validly contest election in Imo State or are there to set of electoral laws in Nigeria? My position is anchored on the words of the learned jurist of the Supreme Court in the Yola North electoral dispute, where the court, had, court stated emphatically to us, having found and heard that the second respondent, APC, had no candidate in law at the general election conducted in February 23rd, 2019, to elect the member of the House of Rep to represent Yola North, Yola South, Giri Federal Constituency of Adama State, the third respondent, INEC, is thereby ordered to declare and return as elected the candidate other than the APC who pulled the majority of lawful votes cast in the said election. 
I would therefore advocate that while admonishing INEC to adopt most of this court judgment and pronouncement as rules and regulation in their bylaws, to enable it take immediate decision and declare a winner in the event of a situation such as what played out in Imo, rather than ask the candidate with the next majority of vote cast in the election to go to court before he or she can be declared winner of an election where he or she is the only candidate. Maybe, or maybe Ararume Anibese wants to be Supreme Court Senator. After, after all, the state has a Supreme Court governor. You don't hear that from my mouth too. Finally, I think the time to insist and ensure internal party democracy is now. And we should be aware that without internal party democracy, we cannot grow democracy. For if candidates are imposed by godfathers, they will do everything to circumvent the will of the people during the election and impose such persons either fraudulently or through the courts, enhanced by the de desperation and inability of our electoral process truly to be truly transparent. If care is not taken, our claimed Democrats will gradually destroy this democracy. A word said in half goes into the wise and becomes a whole. Mm. Mm. I'd like to start with your accusation of the Sorosuke um, young people who didn't come out to vote. <laughs> Nothing has changed actually since the last elections, aside from the um, voters' registration being last partaken in 2018. It ought to be a continuous system where, as you're clocking 18, you're registering. It's not doing elections. Are they like ready that. to register? But hold on, mm -hmm. Also, the candidates haven't also changed. You see two sides of the same coin. APC, PDP, you vote this one or that one. You just, they become senators, they get enriched. They don't, they're not the Sorosoke candidates. So we're waiting okay. gradually uh, okay. for 2023. Oh, okay. that, that, that's an interesting perspective. Yes. But you know, you know one observation across the world about democracy, there seems to be a force that gravitates all democracies to two-party system. Whether it is Ghana or America, where you have over a hundred parties, but you only get to hear about Republicans and Democrats. Whether it is the UK or France or South Africa, there is you have that two-party situation. So it's something that is also case you also think about um, in, 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 that, in that consideration. But having said that, are you what presuming that uh, <laughs> is representing this? <laughs> well, I think I, th I think she is in a way. <laughs> What I found most embarrassing is actually the judiciary in this whole mess, not even INEC. That's if true. you have three conflicting judgments <laughs> on the same matter, matter, it brings to the mind the, a recent report that says judiciary is actually the most corrupt arm of government. It's something to think about. Three conflicting on the same issue. Yeah. You have one in the... Uh... In the morning, have one another one in, in the, the afternoon. afternoon. <laughs> On the same Before day. you wake up, another <laughs> third one has come out. <laughs> let's, let's take this from Chuka. Chuka. Before I weigh in. Chuka, how is it done in the uh, UK? Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, um, as Bolangon says about the two-party system, funny enough, the British are beginning to um, embrace a larger set of parties. You know, you, you hear more, you, uh, maybe because of the nationalism, drive in Scotland. You hear a lot about the Scottish party and um, the liberals are not small. So the labor conservative thing is actually now gradually being uh, uh, is it unraveled or dismantled. You know, their stronghold. And, you, you know, in a few years, we might see something different. Um, Nigeria, I don't know why we're gravitating to a two party system for 200 million people. Um, I think we should have more, and the more the confusion that I'm, I'm not calling it confusion, but the more confusion there is, the better, because it will not allow certain people to um, manipulate the the popular, you know, general the people, Nigerian people, which is what they do now. Um, for Jumoke, I'm, I'm, I'm funny enough, I sort of see nothing much happening until 2023. Yeah. Because we have in place a set of people that will stop anything that is about that will happen for our good. They will fight to right. stop it. They will fight the United States. They will fight the UK. They will fight the world. They will even fight CNN, a station. So don't <laughs> think that anything is going to change until 2023. Not with Lai Mohammed as the voice man, Garba Shehu, and the other chap, uh, Ade, somebody, Ade Shino. So 
basically they will talk and the so people who act, which is the let president and his team, will carry on. Nothing okay. is going to change till 2023. Okay, I'm not saying it will change, but nothing is likely to happen till 2023. Otherwise, there'll be war, to be honest. Mm. I want to quickly say that, yes, we need to hold the, the, the parties accountable. There's too much impunity mm. within the parties. You were talking about internal party yes. democracy. Yeah. Clearly, no matter what APC tells us, they need to fix that. Having said that, let's come back to the Sorosuke generation. I'm going to turn to Jumoke because she's the one who's been championing. <laughs> it. But you see, I think we're trying to, we, what Nigerians are doing now is trying to overburden the Sorosuke concept. Mm. Right? They came out to fight police brutality. Yeah. And in coming out strongly against that, we see how, how prepared they were, mm -hmm. how truly well planned. Organized. Yeah, organized. Thank you. That's the word. So I think we're too much in a hurry to I expect agree. them no, no, to, no, no, to no, come quickly. in now at this no, quickly, election. Quickly. From what we've seen about the Sorosuke generation, mm. they're not going to hurry into this. No, no. Uh, we are they're not, going um, to prepare for the no, no, next no, uh, round. Treasure, treasure, if you take what Chuka said, mm. yeah. that these people will kill, that if they will fight anybody. Yeah. And so if you know that they will fight anybody, yeah. the time to begin to prepare is now. Yeah. Otherwise, if you wait, fold your hand and take that, 2023 will come. And then what you just throw the in. What well, gives you the impression well, that no, they are planning? Exactly. Well, you didn't uh, know you, about you what they did. You, are not, you, are, you don't have people. No, 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 no. You didn't know. Anyway. No, don't preempt them because you didn't well, um, so, have an idea. Some well, Chuka, Chuka is up next after the break. <laughs> <laughs> Well, according to Christopher Malo, virtue is the fount from which honor springs. And so today, I'm asking, what are your virtues? As the year draws to a close, and the advocate marks 100 episodes, I have decided to move away from my usual advocacy subjects. Nigerians are short now on virtues, and this surely will affect or affects or will continue to affect our life practices. So anyway, here's a short personal thing. Now, I have four children whose names were chosen carefully as they popped along. I even have a name for a fifth one, should there be one. Now, the first, a lady is Amwali, which means joy. The second, a young man named Udo, means peace. Ifunaya, another lady, translates to love. And the last, a mid-teenager, a belly, means compassion. Joy, peace, love, and compassion. A fitting mantra for one's life. Virtues to live by. I imagine absolute adherence to this by all of us in Nigeria. Would the results not be better than a flawed constitution? Does the constitution even exhibit these virtues? When last have Northern Nigeria seen joy or peace? Does the Igbo man show uncommon love to others of different tribes? Has the president exhibited compassion any time recently? Maybe to the young NSTARS protesters that he and the inspector general are out to kill? In his lopsided cabinet and other major appointments, has he been fair? Has he shown love for all Nigerians or only for his kind? The pursuit of power and money has stifled the Nigerian psyche, leaving her people short on kindness and generosity. We care more for prosperity and less for compassion. Many die for lack of life's basic necessities, but yet the politicians in power continue to loot the treasury. Anti-corruption is a political matter in these parts. It is not sincere and, does, and cares not for the real thing. If it were not fake, more or less everyone in power would go down. We need honorable mantras to live by. Which ones do you have? or you don't have any, I ask you to sit up today and choose them. They're already there. You just need to bring them to the fore and activate them. Then you keep reminding yourself of them as the days and years go by. Me, I'll never lose track of mine. They surround me in four people I love. Every day I am reminded of these virtues. They have been made strong in human representation. I don't really deal with names that glorify the greatness of man. They can lead to delusions of grandeur. And I don't need names about prosperity. It is the simple ones about virtues like faith, hope, trust, endurance. And please, 
give these virtue names in our native languages? Well, I can tell you the virtues that I have, honesty <laughs> and integrity. I can also tell you the ones I've been praying for. Do you have integrity? I have integrity, sir. What I do not have is patience. <laughs> 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 and timeliness. I ought to be prompt, you know, I'm more punctual to meetings. I'm praying for those. <laughs> Okay, so we're talking about virtues. Well, you're, you've advocated about virtues. But before I go on, I like the, this quote. I took this quote from your advocacy. The pursuit of power and money has stifled the Nigerian psyche. It is so true. It is, how, what can we do to return to that pre-1980, pre-1970? How do you know that we're not pursuing power and money in pre-1970? It wasn't this <laughs> terrible. It wasn't this... this <laughs> Where now? It, it wasn't it like was. this. It no, was. it wasn't. Something led to it. Back then, Bomo Bomo was not all over the place. Yeah, like but, they, but that back then we had Bomo Bomo. <laughs> we had Bomo Bomo, but you know, why am I even saying Bomo Bomo? Bomo Bomo, they were there. Back then. <laughs> they were there. By the way, Bomo Bomo is kidnapped. <laughs> kidnapped. <laughs> yeah. So you were talking it's... about mantras, right? I have two mantras. I'm not going to talk about virtues. Well, I have. And perseverance is my best, right? But you're talking about mantras as well. Um, I like that um, there is success on the other side of fear mm. and be the change that you, you expect. Those are the two that I hold very dear. There's another one by Marian Williamson that I hold dear, that you can be anything that you want to be. Mm. You shouldn't be afraid of shining. You shouldn't dim your light so that other people can shine. You should just shine and be the best that you can for, be. For me, you know? really, um, I would want people to say these are this man's virtues. Yeah. You should know yourself. No, 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 no. Oh. For me, no, I want to no. know. That's what I'm to saying. Face, that's what that's they me. Think, yeah. That's me. Let people, let people be the judge Correct. of my character. Okay. Which you one know? do you know that you are lacking? And you are that's what I'm for? saying. You, you that is seated with me. Which one do you know that, that you are lacking in? That I'm lacking or that the one I have. <laughs> so let people be the judge of my character. And, and okay. so if, if I would want people to be the judge of my character, so I would have to always, you know, want to treat people the way I want to be treated. You know, so, so that's it. And then, but quickly, um, I like the fact that Chuka didn't want to talk about government, but on the, ended up talking about government. The, the, We're having an internal the, audit, character audit right well, now. I, I, I'm not sure I will go there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there was, there was this story uh, in, 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 the, in, the, in the media last week about a soldier who was beating up a man on, on a on on crotch. Yes. And what was the scene? The man, the day before, corrected huh. her child. The child was going to cross the road. And they said, oh, no, you can't, you're a four-year-old boy, you can't cross the road like that. That was a sin. So the next day, the mom came and beat up this guy on the crutches. And I'm asking myself, sometimes past, you can actually, uh, um, you're allowed to correct other people's and children. And we're living a communal life. Exactly. Not now that we live and a there was societal no big life. Deal. I know people who could even cane me. And my father would be, oh, thumbs up, that, that, that's good. Yeah. But imagine a soldier beating up a man on crutches, dragging him out of the car and beating him up. Where is the compassion? Hmm. It's in Chuka's advocacy. It's in, it it's in Chuka's advocacy. Hmm. Franklin Roosevelt once said that virtues are lost in self-interest as rivers are lost in the sea. I'm up next after the break. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. Today, Nigerians know the problems, but are we part of the solution? Let's talk about solving Nigeria's myriad of problems. I'm just a journalist. I ask questions. You give us the answers. What's the solution to Nigeria's insecurity issues? Another presidential press release? Or the resignation of the president as he advised his predecessor? will pay back the money from the pensions fund if borrowed as opined by the governor's firm led by Governor Fayemi of Ikiti State. This government, next government, or never. 
The northern leaders who tagged the answers an attempt to change the Buhari regime. Why are they now asking the president to resign? They want to remove him themselves and not the youth? Does Nigeria need a messiah or a working system that outlives the politicians as they come and go? I give you a typical example. Lagos grew in infrastructure, greenery, and cleanliness under Governor Fashola. People voted his successor, Governor Ambody, for continuity. But we saw Lagos roll back in safety and cleanliness to the extent we had pigs eating from waste on our roads. If we had a working system, developments would be continuous, regardless of the politician in place. We can't play ping pong with policies every four years and expect any real development in Nigeria. Are Nigerians the solutions to Nigeria's problems, or should we keep waiting for the Messiah? If we aren't waiting for a Messiah, why aren't we calling for electoral reforms now? Well, we started talking about electoral reforms. Or are we waiting for 2023 to do everything that we want changed in Nigeria? If we have the solutions to Nigeria's problems, why aren't we all calling for restructuring now? Where states are in charge of their resources and we stop holding the president accountable for what happens in 774 local governments across the country? Or even this bandmate of our National Assembly. Since they can't invite the president to ask him about insecurity issues across the country, who National Assembly is? The budget for the National Assembly should maybe used to fix our roads. Do you agree? Are you the solution to Nigeria's problem? Are you the solution to Nigeria's problems? I'm just asking. Um, the question you asked was the same question we asked you. And then you say you are doing something <laughs> in the pipeline. And you know when something is, uh, blah, you know when something is done in the pipeline here, yeah, oh, it yeah. never gets to see the light <laughs> of the day. But it brings me back to Chuka's advocacy. For us, everything you listed, beautiful, fantastic, but without the right virtues. Mm. If you like restructure you are going to have smaller teeth. Smaller Nigeria. Replaced the bigger teeth. If you like, you know, um, remove the National Assembly, you are going to have big State dictatorship. Assembly. You know? So what we need, we, that's why people say we need a reorientation. We need that, those compassion, love, mm. you know, peace of mind. So when you are able to share those, instill them, be the school that, you know, others will attend. You know, let people judge you and say, look, this man, you know, is compassionate. If we are all compassionate, I wouldn't want to steal from you. True. I wouldn't want to take that which belongs to the community. True. So I think we need to also start from, you know, the ability. But Joshua asked a question which you didn't answer, that when did we lose those values? Yeah, quickly, you find out that um, it is the same thing. My uncle, my father, worked in the ministry and had to queue up almost to the point of death to collect pension. Mm. Some of the ones that Mena has collected are defending. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, that, uh... and so he now said, and then you find out that people who were working mm. under him, who were still in service, saw them queuing up almost at the point of death. And they're like, we won't have want to go through the True. same thing. We we'll steal our own. We we'll collect our pension while we are, while we are here. Yeah. So gradually. And then those people who, who, who worked for the name, we saw how there was no more money, and since there was no more money, nobody celebrated them. And then everybody started celebrating those that came with money. And so gradually, you know, generations were coming after that, and the only thing they met was... was what was, what was, what was, what was, what was Let me quickly ride on the back of that. One of the... Um, you see, in Germany, we know that nothing of, of inferior quality comes out from Germany. It's a national virtue, excellence. If you told a German that this is not okay, you'd be embarrassed. You go back and fix it and do it excellently well. The question is, what is the Nigerian national virtue? Quality assurance. Making money. <laughs> There's no quality assurance anymore. No, that's what I'm saying. In Germany, and, and in, in Germany here, right? Our national virtue have. is politics. 
fish guy politics. That's why I said it's, it's, it's not government, defined. government That's of it's politics. Not there is, we don't have a common interest. There is no nothing tying us all together. Because and that, we that don't a have a problem. Nigerian culture. We have on, Nigerian on cultures. Let we me, are different people. It, there are also parts uh, of the world where there are different people. In fact, Shuka, within the same state. back to of, your advocacy of, title of, of, of Texas. If, if someone yes, I, from you East know, Texas... I, I, I found interesting what, um, at, the, when, at the start of the, uh, of the advocacy, the borrowing from the pension fund, which I think is a big... I don't know. It, it, I mean, it would have made sense if this was a country that would pay its debts, but it's not. And what shocked me, or did not shock me, what I found, like, typical Nigerian, is that the other chap at African Development Bank I think because the government has helped him retain his job, uh, he has come out to say that that money should be borrowed and that, in fact, every African country should do it. Very strange. I think that's additional, right? Because there's too yes. many additionals now. Akiwumi. And Akiwumi. now Akiwumi. this one is now becoming like the other additional uh, oh, in no. Asu Rock. I, I, I and um, thing, the I second know. is Ambode and rubbish. And that's the rubbish collection, refuse collection. Yeah. I think Ambode was doing the right thing, actually and politics got in the way. Uh, he was fighting politics. It is not right. I don't think it is absolutely right to give a bunch of party people uh, the, the refuse collection jobs in a very haphazard way that, yes, makes us look like we're clean, but eventually it will derail because it is not organized. And these are not people that they were not, they were, they were trying to they were clearing things without technology and all that. If you have technological companies, maybe two, three, or four, that, that would have done the job a lot better. So perhaps really what they should have been doing was to have fought somebody on whether only one person should be taking that job, or more like four. But I, th I think he, he was doing the absolute right thing. Maybe I, I think uh, Bolao well, said he wants to borrow... But I'll say I want to borrow from that fund also. I want, I want, I want to comment on that, <laughs> on that uh, borrowing Mr. from pension fund. Mr. Because Mr. I, I can think... Borrow. It but has my been presented, that I would pay back. Um, in my Merchants. opinion, from a lazy perspective by the media. Now, the pension fund, the pension act, has prescribed in details what that fund can be invested in, what percentage you can invest in every segment of the defined investment opportunities. So what it means is that no matter what the governors say, if what you want them to come and invest in does not qualify under the act, there's nothing you can do. So you first of all have to uh, go Bola, back to that Bola. floor. Which is and why assuming, I like the parliamentary assuming, system of government. <coughs> assuming, like the assuming that Hold this on, is please. two things very yeah. structured quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Assuming that this is a, law, a country where we obey laws, nobody will be bothered whether the money is borrowed or not because it True. must be paid back. True. But right. because it's not a country, it's a country where laws are observing breach. That is why we are bothered whether they will pay back. And in some cases, uh, where would the sector that is meant to be invested in, they will invest it in another sector true. until you go to court. Very true. And the Very point true. I want to make is, this is why I prefer the parliamentary system of government. You're supposed to explain to the people what you want to do with their money. You just don't say, well, it's in the law. Then tell us what is in the law and tell us what you're doing with it. Yeah. Not just tell us that you're going into the pension trust fund. This affects me because I'm, I'm, I'm a retiree. Yeah. <laughs> so it means that what I'm looking forward to, you've already borrowed it. The people deserve the government they get to. So you retirees, don't worry. They will borrow it and never return They will repay it. it. <laughs> Well, our advocacy will be incomplete without your contribution as we read through your comments on our social media platforms. My last advocacy is Nigeria working for you is certainly stirring up some conversations online. Ade Ashibieko says Nigeria is working for northerners alone and some pretenders who are suffering in the south and still supporting Buhari's government. Bunch of pretenders, he said. Also, Oge Chuku Agim says, for where even our universities are not working, you can imagine because of PHCN power outage, Staff can't answer the call of nature because there's no water. Nigeria is not working at all, though. Thank you, Oge Chuku and Ashebi Eko for your comments. Do continue to participate with us on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, 
or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, please go to plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. After the break, our very own Gwalaon is advocating for the funding of our public universities. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. Nigeria is a very well-endowed country, so we're not lacking in resource. And our human resource is our strongest resource. Uh, you know, we should learn to build legacies or live life for others. Before we run out of time, I have a question. What, what's your talent? What would you have been? And we have to go quickly before we run out of time. If oh you were gosh. not doing what, what did you I, want to I be? I did tap dance. Yeah. I would have just been a lover boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Fed up with this whole generation. You know, let's let, let that generation get away with everything. They're always right because they're older than we are. They know better, which they don't. You know, I mean, if they knew better, why would Nigeria still be in the state that it's in? It's been in their hands for however long. Religion is money in this country. Yeah. Okay. And even more so, not only is it money, it's also works hand in hand or is twinned with politics. Mm -hmm. All right. From the examples of how you deal with the problems of Lagos, and if you come down to Lagos, solve VI, solve Mushi, and then you can learn, and then not, you cannot solve Nigeria's problem in 2019. I am not against worshipping God, I'm not against singing to God, I'm not against any of that. But there needs to be some consideration. I mean, not everybody buys into that. Today, we are less honest, we spend all the day in church, we give all the money to the church. So even if you are a true man of God, as far as I'm concerned, you're complicit yes. in the downfall yes. of this country. If the National Assembly members were asked to swear by Amadioha and Shongo and Thank the rest, you. a lot of them will not <laughs> follow. Yes. I'm not sure but quite. Face I, it. I, I, I have, face have it. a reason for why they may not do that. <laughs> but I will, I will, I will, I will yeah, be because they know, they know yeah. the consequences. I will, I will, they will, I will never be sidetracked. To be honest, every sexual encounter you have means you've slept with everybody that, that person slept has with. slept with. Mm. And there are lots of viruses that don't even have any name that you know of that you will get for life and you will be transmitting this as you go along. The budget for sex in Nigeria annually, even in the world, is triple the national budget. Okay. What okay. I'm saying is yeah. we must fight to make our democracy real for us. I'll bust your bubble. There is no hope. There's no decision. No, no, no. I think the people that believe in these pastors then it's serious mental health mm. check. Because, you know, people might be thinking, oh, we're just, you know, uncivilized, crazy, mad people. I'm not part of you people, though. <laughs> no, I said people. <laughs> I'm waiting I to say my own. No problem. That's why I'm talking now. You talk your mm -hmm. own. Funding tertiary education in Nigeria. I fell in love with Obafemi Aolo University well before I became a student of the institution. From the stretch of well-kept lawns and the carefully laid out trees on both sides of the dual carriageway that leads into the campus of Bafemi Awolo University is a beauty to behold. The buildings were architectural masterpieces that were well ahead of their times. Those classes, auditoriums, lecture theaters were fully air-conditioned. As a matter of fact, from the design of some of those lecture theaters, for example, the theaters in White House, that's the physical sciences building, it was obvious that the designer did not contemplate a season when we would not be able to provide air conditioner in those lecture theaters. We were not supposed to ever get that poor. And that was the right thinking in 1962. By the time I actually became a student in 1987, the air conditioners in most of those lecture theaters are fucked up and never to be revived. Some years after, when I came on a visit, you could literally fetch rainwater from some classrooms and even lecturers' offices due to major roof leakages. Before I left Ife in 1991, the freshers that came in were already holding classes in the amphitheater and sports stadium. Now, 1991 was 30 years ago, and the infrastructure decay in these institutions have not abated. The bad news, however, is that under the current funding model for university education in Nigeria, things are not about to get better. In fact, they will get worse. 
I'm constrained to get blunt with this. Not based on current 10 months closure of Nigerian universities, but observations of the university funding space from when I became a student of one of those institutions 33 years ago. Incidentally, during my graduate studies in the US, I happened to have worked as an analyst in a department called institutional research in the university. That department was a custodian of the entire university numbers from enrollment to budget. And I can say for free that the problem of stretched government funding for university education is not peculiar to Nigeria. The only difference is that they are way ahead of the curve in terms of the attention paid to education. All those new agreements and negotiations being worked out between government and ASU, I'm sorry to say, will be observed in breaches over the years. And this extended strike will not be the last. We are at that junction where stakeholders must first accept this reality and then begin to work out the next phase in the funding modalities for our universities. And that phase will draw resources from places other than the FGN coffers. So there, we need additional sources of income to fund university education. According to donorbox.org, the combined endowment income university research funding from science philanthropy, science philanthropy in the US was about $7 billion a year. That's about 2.8 trillion naira. In 2017, contributions to the US colleges and universities reached $43.6 billion. That's about 17.5 trillion naira, which is more bigger than our entire 2021 FGN budget. And these are contributions, not from the government. It would be simplistic, though, to assume that we can start comparing ourselves with the US. But those numbers should give us a peek into what is possible when we design a workable funding model that incorporates corporate organizations, individual alumnus, and philanthropists in supporting university education funding. I cannot finish my thoughts in this one episode. I may have to consider a part two. True, another one. Well said, <laughs> Bola Very well said. Well My said. only question Why I is know. that you policy very well said. Very well said. Well said no, because it, it echoes the thoughts of a lot of us. Yeah. yeah. And particularly, no, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just yeah. kidding. I know that 5% of every company's um, profit Third fund. is paid as to taxes. the government as taxes for yes. education. Aside from company income tax, which is 30% of your profit, 5%. Yes. 2%, 2%. Contribut tax. Contribution to TET funds. What happens to the money? Tertiary, it's used for the uh, tertiary, tertiary education. education um, <laughs> in what trust way funds. is this? In what way is this, this fraction, you know? It's, um, it's no, uh, TET fund actually, uh, tertiary education trust fund, they actually... You know, um, then what do they do? Because they, clearly, they, from no, they what have, he has they, said, no, they develop, they are building structures in most of the infrastructure in most of the university, but it's not enough, it's just a drop. You yeah. know, the fund is not enough it, compared it's not about to just building infrastructure, yes, compared to the universities. It's not just about building infrastructure, do we actually, you know, fund research? Correct. You know, Fund. and even with the well, funding infrastructure, there's a continuous the dog of slide structure, in the dog of research. Uh, decay yeah. in those schools. In many of yeah, the schools, the dog of uh, they say CEO Ibo is in Afada. That one for you. See, <laughs> Bolahan said when they built those uh, structure, the people that built them in the 60s, you know, presumed that being a university, you know, you as a university student, you are not supposed to suffer. Supposed you, to sweat. My my professor, then Professor Unoma, late professor, God rest his soul, now said, as undergraduate of history in the University of Ibadan, then they wear matric gown to the um, dining hall to eat. And you know, it was a thing of honor. And then if you couldn't come to the dining hall, you call and they serve you, you see the uh, waiter with long cap. Yeah. You know, we rode the trolley. That will be the day. To serve you your food <laughs> in your room. So that was why they could they could, could protest when the chicken was reduced from uh, half. half chicken to, to quarter, quarter chicken. You know, now, even the chicken you is get chicken, yeah, so, so what we are talking <laughs> about really is that 
you know, the more we started expanding the um, uh, education and then you say states started building many universities, we also needed to take look for a model to fund, consistently Correct. fund these universities. Yeah. And so the idea where you practice, um, you have a local government called Nigeria, where the president is the local <laughs> government chairman, and then you have governors who are just there doing nothing, and then you ask them to build the university, and the university okay. become much more Let's take two cards, but I to... remember all my siblings went to OAU, actually, and the reason I didn't want to go there was they were always on strike. The University of Lagos that I went to had a system in place where it's the, the same VC... Thing. There's no difference in... No, the VC at the, the time... The structures too are dilapidated. We drew from us and they started building commercial structures in Unilag. I, I, I say I go there, they don't get... I don't know what you're talking theater, about, again, infrastructure. If, this, if <laughs> these young ones don't have decent places to sleep and I went, decent access say, to research, don't, don't then we're not even talking the about... Restaurant. Sorry, Chuka, in a, in a Chuka, quickly. No, what is, that would be Chuka, quickly, to. wait. What, what, Do you know that yeah. these universities are called ASU, we draw from ASU, the hostess, the hostess. That's what we're saying. Americans who put their prisoners in where we call hey, university what? hostess. I'm saying that's 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 me. Quote me. Chuka. Chuka. Well, um, my, my own take here is that you, you this know you are an negotiation is to do person, with ASU. You know, so. I, has the education minister been involved at all? Uh, who is no, he? Not because I may be wrong. I don't want to accuse him of what he has not done or has done. He's no, but even in the discussion, Adamo, Adamo education... Is failure. Education is a complete is part failure of the negotiation. As a minister of education, he has been there since 2015. It's minister of labor that is negotiating he, on their behalf. Exactly. And, and, and I don't been... know what that man understands about the, the academia at the moment. Adamu Adamu is 66. He's too old for the job. And oh. he's, a, he's a complete failure. He has been there, reappointed. Nothing Five has happened. Everything nothing. is down. I, I, I totally agree. Nigeria. Not only him, or... I remember his first turn or when um, Queen's College was having the cholera outbreak and we never heard anything from Not him. Not only him, I can begin to count what for you. What about the National Sam Education Agu. Agency? Sam Egu. Sam Egu was Education Minister as we were on strike and he was celebrating 25 years of marriage. <laughs> <laughs> yes, quote me. Um, Wiki was Education Minister and this is um, um, a lawyer who the only, the only Credential claim he had. To fame. Yes, claim to fame was his uh, being a chief of staff and the local government chairman. And so you made him education minister under GEJ. What did we achieve? Nothing. And, and so a situation where you don't even have, you know, people who are knowledgeable in education heading the education ministers. What are we talking about? And then if you contrast that with what we see the Biden gov uh, government doing now, they're handpicking. No, 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 no. They're handpicking people from Harvard, from Yale. Former Surgeon General and no, so on they, and so no, forth. No, here, 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 the new campaign, the new campaign. Are you a member oh of the party? Oh, my word. Okay, then, I'm up next after the break. This is a letter to Nigeria's first-time visitor. Nigeria, the trailer country. Welcome to Nigeria, the trailer country. Let me give you a quick tour of the country. Ordinarily, Minister Lai, our information minister, should do it. But he's still busy with the uh, hashtag NSAS martyrs almost two months after. So, I'm helping him today. Dear visitor to Nigeria, be not bewildered that in our cities, trailers compete with smaller cars for space on both the highways and the inner city roads. Although we've had fatalities that had necessitated laws restricting articulated vehicles to particular times of the morning and night within the cities. Our elites, who you will soon start hobnobbing with, have made the laws of no effect. It's the same elites who own the trucks who disobey the law. Our roads are the best, according to Minister Raji Fashola. It's just that many of them are death traps. Some of them have been under construction for years. Others collapse right after inauguration. It is as bad as your car needing alignments every other week and you needing to dodge portals in the middle of a highway. Yet, you must arm yourself in your car with the certificates of roadworthiness. Trumps, <laughs> you expect too much. Let me apologize to you for your own naivety. That might be possible when we borrow from perhaps Yugoslavia because we're no longer credit worthy in China. 
As for a rail network, the heavily glamorized Abuja Kaduna rail route is experiencing hiccups. Except you want to experience a train stop in the middle of nowhere, think twice before taking the train to Nevada. And yes, you will spend all of two hours avoiding the bad routes on the Lagos Ibado Expressway if you took the train. Hopefully, you won't be the only passenger at a pricey 3,000 naira or 6,000 naira. Even with the bad roads, the road trip on the average is two hours. So and I honestly can't explain why Nigeria bought a train that does Lagos Abuja in two hours or Lagos Ibadan in two hours. As for Lagos City, join the rest of us in hoping the light blue rail in Lagos will go operational by 2023. It's an election year and politicians will need to con and convince us that they will do better if elected. We usually believe them. It's a trailer country without trailer parks. So they line the roads and cause mindless traffic at Apapa, Shagam, Ore, Ibado, and many other places in the country. You will have to fly to escape the trailers. Although even your flight is not guaranteed, it could be delayed for longer than it takes you to travel by road. The truth is, our elites travel in private jets. Those delays are alien to them. Perhaps when next you visit, our electric cars will be on the roads. Governor Sowolu of Lagos toyed with one the other day. It's just that unless the car charges with solar energy, you may be grounded even before your journey starts. Welcome to Nigeria again. Heed my travel advisory. Um. Now let me borrow your words. Um, I, I quite agree with you. Um, it's a very lovely travel advice, and this is the best way to advise anybody about Nigeria to avoid, you know, falling, you know, prey to hate speech, you know, talk, uh, talk you know. Thank you. Um, that's the best way to go about it. Just let people know that uh, Nigeria is not bad, though. It's, it's a very not. great place to live in. Just yes, that the roads, <laughs> you have trailers on the road, but they won't, they, won't, they won't bother you. You know, they'll mind their business, but they'll cause traffic, you know. And so you can fly, but if you want to fly, if they, would, if they delay you at the airport, don't complain because, you know, somebody that is going by the bad road can get there before you, but it's okay. Oh it's, it's, uh, it's quite understandable. Um, and then, um, mind you, you know, the minister is very busy. You know, there are issues. You know, CNN is busy, you know, doing wow. the fake news the stories. And then, you know, you, you know, you know but beat. really, quickly, sorry, for, uh, but really, it's um, why this thing is funny and laughable. But you ask yourself, these same people, they travel, they send their children abroad, yeah. and then they come back, they promise these things. Is it that? After promising, they go to sleep? Or is it that we are the ones sleeping, the one failing sleeping, to though. hold them accountable? We're not holding them accountable. To do these things. I, I, it's, 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 a mix, it's a mix of to? both, actually. Um, the portion I will disagree with you was about two hours to Ibano. I it's have actually, done six before. It's actually four hours on a good day. I knew, I have a friend mm -hmm. who was mm -hmm. going for a party in Ibano. No, no. Got on that uh, road. Um, they were just waiting for him to arrive. I mean, he, he, he got to Ibadan at about 8 p.m. The party was totally over. Um, was Bola, we are not talking about um, when you went there. <laughs> Do you know in this same Ibadan road, I used to, if I had a matter in court in Ibadan, court of appeal, I don't go to sleep in Ibadan. I live here by 7, and I still get to court before 9. Here, you this same. That was yes. there. So, why do we have to make the road so bad and now bring a train that we do the same time it's that you, you spend on the road. And when um, China, the same China we are buying from, is doing bullet train. And, uh, I bet second base. Chuka. The choo choo train. <laughs> you, are, you, are buy, you are buying the um, 1950. Yeah. That's why. And so the whole thing is a joke. In this one program, this is why I like you advocate. The, we have agreed now that the Minister of Transport, Labor, Education, Fashola, to some extent, are all bad and have failed just by everything we've discussed. And what it shows us is that it's not a thinking government, really. And all these men of, they're all grown. They're not small boys. 
I don't know if they're intelligent, naturally, but they're not doing much. I mean, the trace, really, Apapa should be closed down, Apapa port. It has no business being in Lagos. That Ibafong depot has no business being in Lagos. It should be shut down and moved elsewhere. And I will propose Ondo State so that a new city will grow in Ondo of about three to five million people. That would be where we will have a lot of port activities Chuka. and so on. You are talking of Ondo, Ojuka. You are talking of Ondo, Ondo. You remember those days, Shagam. Shagam used to be a very difficult. I'm talking not Shagam, um, um, Moe Bafo. When they were trailer parks, there used to be a very difficult place to park. As I speak to you now, Bini Bypass. Yes. If you pass through Bini Bypass because they have a trailer park there, you will swear that you will never go by road again. Mm. So mm. Nigeria shouldn't be a place. You can't have trailers without trailer park. Oh. A papa had trailer parks, they but they have sold used. them. They have sold them out. To they themselves. have concessioned them. And somebody will say they concession. How do you concession somebody's property to another person? And then you now say trailer should park on the road. And then for eternal, eternally, we are looking for how to now manage where to put trailer. You say go and put them in Shagam. Then we blow whistle. You'll be coming to our papa. Please, please, please. Uh, our returnees, because uh, this is the season where you people usually come... I don't want to hear shit, man. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not for this advice, real. Come, let us enter traffic bring, bring together. The dollar. Bring the God, dollar. we bless you. We need the dollar for Christmas. We will take you around. I will chauffeur you. You know, wherever you are going to, please just come back. We are expecting you. God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Finally, it's time to draw the curtains on this week's episode of The Advocate. However, the advocacy continues on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, you can go to plustvafrica.com slash the Advocate NG. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Till next week, same time on the station. Let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye -bye now. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.